buenos dias. Today we're going to look at some of the verbs in your verb list that look a little bit different. You might have noticed quite a few of the verbs on your verb list and an SE when all of our verbs have just stopped with the R. <clears throat> so we're going to be looking at those verbs. Those verbs are called reflexive verbs in Spanish. <clears throat> These verbs are called reflexive verbs in Spanish because the action reflects back to the subject. So it reflects back, so it's called a reflexive verb. <clears throat> and what ends up happening is that the subject and the object are the same person. Okay, So if we look at our pictures <clears throat> here, um, we have two examples of to shave, okay? So this is an example of not reflexive, okay? She shaves him. And in English, we will use the same, you'll see this too. So she shaves him. Um, however, on the picture on the right, he is the subject, he's the shaver, but he's also the object. He's receiving the shave, okay? So for this one, we're going to change it in English and in Spanish. So in this one we have, um, it's not she, he. He shaves himself. Okay, so in English, this is our change. This is how we denote that reflects back. We add the self, we don't say him, we say himself. So in Spanish, we're going to look at verbs that have that action. So let's look at this verb. This verb is the verb lavar, to wash, okay? And here, um, he is washing a plate, okay? He's not a plate, so this is not a reflexive verb. The one on the right, though, she is washing herself, okay? That one is a reflexive verb, so that one is going to be lavarse. In Spanish, the ones that are reflexive, we add the little se on to the end. This verb is the verb <clears throat> pintar. Okay? She's painting a wall here. That's just pintar. Um, but on the right, she is painting herself. Okay? So she's the painter and she's also receiving lovely paint. So we have pintarse. And then last, we have another verb to get dressed, vestir. You can tell here that she's dressing the little guy. She is the <clears throat> dresser, but he's the one that actually gets the shirt. So that's vestir, but on the right, little guy's dressing himself. So we have vestirse. Okay. So you can see the, the action, what it looks like when it reflects back on self. And Spanish marks them with this little guy right here, just the se on the end. So you can tell it's a himself, herself situation. In English, <clears throat> um, we have all of those different. So depending on who is, if the person's talking, if the person's talking to, if you're, if you're talking about them, we change in English. So you have myself himself, yourself, themselves in English. And these are honestly, these are more misused than English than I think a lot of other pronouns. I hear a lot of people in English wanting to, um, wanting to sound a little more educated, a little more fancy, and they'll say, talk to either John or myself. Um, that's an inappropriate use of the word myself. I talk to myself, but you talk to me. So people are wary of incorrectly using me, and so they try to get more fancy and say myself, and that is incorrect. You should only say myself if you are the talker, if you're both the subject and the um, object there. <clears throat> but in Spanish, um, let's look at what those um, pronouns are going to be. So myself would be me. Ourselves would be nos. Um, the two form, yourself, the informal would be te. The usted form, the formal of yourself, still yourself, would be se. Uh, the plural, um, yourselves, 
um, you guys' selves would be se, himself, se, herself, se, themselves, whether they're female or male, also se. So I'm really sorry. It's kind of confusing because you have a lot of se, 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 se. Um, but where we really need to kind of focus on is me, te, or no. So we will see changes there. So this is the Spanish version of our pronouns, reflexive pronouns. So how do you know which verbs um, are like this in Spanish? Um, first, uh, I think importantly, when you look a word up in word reference or when you see a word on your verb on your vocabulary list, if it ends with that se on the end of the infinitive, you'll know that it is a reflexive verb in Spanish and it's one that you have to um, use this structure with. <laughs> Um, be aware, though, that many verbs do have a non-reflexive version. Um, so, for example, this is the verb arreglar, to fix. And you'll see in word reference, this is why I would like you to use word reference and not the search engine who should not be named, eh, arreglar versus arreglarse. Okay? The se on the end tells you you use this when, this, when she's getting herself ready, when she's fixing up herself when the same person is the subject and the object, and but you don't need it if he's fixing a sink or um, if he's fixing her, okay? <clears throat> Be aware, there are many verbs that in Spanish, they have a different um, just perceptual concept of the verb. Um, one of those is acostarse. So in English, it's just to go to bed. We don't really think about it too much. But in Spanish, they really see him putting the baby down to bed, okay? This one we kind of see in English. That makes sense to us. Yeah, I want to put the baby down to bed. Um, but we don't really, in English, have a conceptual vision of us, us putting ourselves to bed. We don't often say, oh, I'm going to put myself to bed. It's just not how we conceptualize this verb in English. But it is in Spanish. So you'll see acostarse in the dictionary um, or on your vocabulary list. Um, but again, like we said with arreglar, there, are, there is a version of this one that comes up sometimes when they're different people. So be aware of which verbs have this sentarse, um, either in your word reference list or your vocabulary list. Let's look how to conjugate one of those verbs in a sentence, okay? So we're going to start off with simple <coughs> conjugated verbs. That sounds really fancy, but all it means is um, a verb um, conjugation that's just one word, which is most of our verbs we conjugate, okay? We have some fancier ways of saying things like, I'm gonna get ready, or I want to get ready. We'll talk about those next. But for right now, we're just talking about 90% of your sentences that have a verb that you just conjugate the verb. So let's look at um, what happens. First, you can say the subject or not. It's optional still. Um, if you are going to put a no, it's going to happen right here before the reflexive pronoun. So step one is going to be choose the pronoun. So reflexive pronoun. And you're going to choose the one that matches your subject. Okay. So when you're looking at your table, it's going to be may no te or a lot of says okay so depending on where your sub if your subject were l or a yeah your reflexive pronoun would be say if your subject were nosotros your reflexive pronoun would be nos if your subject were ustedes your reflexive pronoun would be say okay so step one choose the correct reflexive pronoun start off with that okay you're gonna have that first thing on your verb um second conjugate your verb like normal Okay, so if our verb were uh, lucharse, we took care of this se, we turned it into a me, and we put it right there, okay? And then secondly, we're left with duchar, normal verb. Chop off the AR, add an O, and we get lucho, yo me lucho. Uh, let's look at another example. Um, perhaps we have the verb uh, preparar. Say, uh, if my subject were to, ok, 
okay? I can say it or not. So step one is find the correct um, pronoun. So we're gonna take this say, we're gonna look up on our list here. The correct pronoun for two is te. So we're gonna start off with that, tu, te. And then I have the verb, oh, preparar, sorry, prepararse. Let's get all your syllables in there. So we have prepar is our root. And then we're going to finish our verb. Tu te preparas para la fiesta. So you're getting ready for the party. Okay. Um, so step one, again, choose the correct reflexive pronoun based on your subject. And step two, conjugate your verb. Pretty simple stuff little fancier stuff. What happens if our verb is not a one word, but it's a complex structure that ends in infinitive? So we're looking at things like voy a bañar or quiero bañar. So these are fancier verb structures. They're complex, which just means they have two or more words. So with our, here's our first word, one, two, Three words here, this one is one, two words, okay? And they end in infinitives. So you can see right here, we got the little R, R here. So this is the types we're talking about. So how do we work with these? Um, same thing uh, as before. Step one, you're gonna choose the right pronoun based on your sentence. Um, step two, you're gonna conjugate your verb. This time we're gonna do fancier and it's gonna end in an R, so this is a multiple structure. But three, <clears throat> that pronoun that we choose, instead of putting it before the verb, we're gonna attach it to the end of the infinitive, okay? So pronoun at the end of the infinitive. So the only thing that's changed here is where we put the infinitive, <clears throat> okay? So here's our example. Our verb was bañar se. So our subject is yo, so step one is that we know that this se has to be a me. Step two, conjugate your verb, prefiero bañar. Step three is <clears throat> take the right pronoun for yo, the me, and add it to the end of the bañar. Let's look at another example. Um, let's look at secarse. So let's say that you have to dry yourself, okay? So if our subject is to, the correct pronoun for to would be te. So we're just gonna hold on to that. Um, you have to dry yourself. This is a fancy one. It's a multiple things. So tienes que secar. Okay, so we have our verb here. It's got three different words, and the last one ends in an infinitive. So lastly, we have this te here that we know we have to use for secarse, the two form. But instead of putting it before, we're going to put it at the end. Tu tienes que secarte. Okay, and that's all one word. So, tu tienes que secarte. This is the fancier version of it. Because our verb is more fancy, we have to put the te on the end instead of ahead of time like we did with our regular ones. If this were a regular verb, you just want to say, not you have to dry yourself, but just you dry yourself, it would just be tu te secas. So when we have just a one word, simple conjugated verb, the te has to come before. But when we have a multiple part verb that ends in an R, that same te comes on the end attached. Lastly, this is a little bit of a cultural note. Um, you do not use <clears throat> possessive adjectives with a reflexive verb, okay? So if the verb is reflexive, the possession is understood. So if you're washing yourself, we know they're your teeth. You don't have to add, I wash myself my teeth, because we know they're your teeth. <clears throat> so, te lavas los dientes. So, we use los, the article, instead of tus, the 
possessive. So this would be incorrect in Spanish. It just is awkward. Te lavas tus dientes. Because of the te, we already know you're washing yourself. So there, there couldn't be anybody else's teeth other than yourself. So it's just unnecessary information. This two's here. So te lavas los dientes. I'd like you to practice a few of these in some sentences with your own information. So write down your answers, please. Um, pregunta número uno. ¿A qué hora te levantas antes de la escuela? Um, so levantarse, to get up. And I think this would be a great um, <clears throat> to look at normalmente and durante la pandemia. Right? We have two different things. I know it's changed for me a lot. Um, Número dos, ¿con qué frecuencia te cortas el pelo? Right, here's where, where you're cutting your own hair again. This is a great question for these times right now. And lastly, ¿prefieres ducharte por la mañana o por la tarde? Um, which is your preference? So here we have a regular one-word verb. Regular one-word verb. This is our fancier structure. So you'll notice on the longer one, this one I put the te here at the end. So I do conjugate my verb and I still have my infinitive, but I had to change it to te because the subject is tu. Uh, 